Welcome back, everyone. Ready to explore some incredible music with us today. Always ready for a musical adventure. Well, today's deep dive takes us on an auditory journey to a place brimming with rhythm, soul, and a history as rich as its melodies. Alkabulin? Alkabulin. You heard right. We're ditching the usual Africa today and diving into the heart of a continent often misunderstood. I'm intrigued. But before we get lost in the music, mind giving us a little background on this Alkabulin? Not at all. And who better to shed some light on its significance than our resident expert? What's the story behind the name and why is it important, especially when talking about music? Well, Alkebulin, meaning mother of mankind, has roots that reach back to ancient Egypt. Wow, we're talking way back. Exactly. It speaks to a heritage that goes far beyond colonial narratives, recognizing Africa as the cradle of humanity. So using Alkebulin is about reclaiming that narrative, connecting with a deeper history. Precisely. And that connection to heritage is deeply intertwined with the music itself. It's about understanding the context where these sounds were born. That makes so much sense. And with a history that rich, it's no surprise that the music born from this land is so vibrant and diverse. Absolutely. It's like a conversation echoing through millennia. A conversation expressed through melodies, rhythms, and voices. You got it. Well, since we're talking about voices, let's tune into some of the giants who've shaped the sounds of Alkebulin. What I find fascinating is how many artists from there haven't just created music, but sparked dialogue, even movements, with their art. That's the beauty of it. Music in Alkebulin is woven into the fabric of life. It's a tool for education, for unity, for social change even. Like Fela Kuti. His Afrobeat was more than just music. It was a call to action. Exactly. He famously called music a weapon. Not literally, of course, but a force for positive change. Powerful stuff. And then you have someone like Miriam Makeba, who described music as a universal language. And she lived that truth. Her voice became a beacon of hope during the struggle against apartheid in South Africa. Talk about music transcending borders. Speaking of traditions, I read about the Griot tradition in West Africa, musical storytellers keeping history alive through song. It's incredible. These griots carry the weight of their ancestors' stories, preserving lineages and legends. Talk about a living archive. It makes you realize there are so many layers to the music of Alkebulin. Absolutely. Mm. To truly appreciate it, we need to understand the influences that have shaped it. Traditional roots, colonial encounters, modern fusions. Like threads in a tapestry, all woven together. So let's start with those foundational threads, those deep-rooted traditions. Imagine the diversity of an entire continent expressed through music. You have intricate rhythms, vocal techniques passed down for generations, and instruments unique to specific regions. It's like each instrument holds a piece of cultural history, but this tapestry doesn't stop there, does it? You mentioned colonial encounters. How did those shape the music? Imagine a cultural intersection, a blending of sounds. Colonialism, while disruptive, brought new instruments, musical structures, and ideas. That fusion led to the birth of genres like high life, which emerged in Ghana. High life? The name itself sounds lively. Tell me more. It lives up to the name. High life is all about infectious rhythms, often driven by guitars and brass instruments. It's a blend of African melodies with those Western harmonies, perfect for celebration and dancing. It's amazing how music embodies both the complexities and the beauty of cultural exchange. Absolutely. And this evolution didn't stop there. As we moved into the 20th century, those modern fusions took center stage. So we're talking jazz, rock, hip hop, all those global genres finding their way into the mix. Precisely. Imagine soulful jazz melodies intertwining with traditional African rhythms, or the raw energy of rock meeting the storytelling power of certain African traditions. It's a constant evolution pushing boundaries, creating something new while holding on to those deep-rooted traditions. A beautiful dance between preserving heritage and embracing innovation. And from what I'm gathering, this dance takes different forms across the continent. You're catching on quickly. Each region has its own distinct flavor, its own story to tell through music. Well then, let's embark on a little musical journey, shall we? Where should our first stop be on this sonic adventure? Let's head west to the birthplace of Afrobeat, West Africa. This region pulsates with energy, rhythms that grab you and don't let go. It's interesting you mention rhythms because I was reading about juju music, also from West Africa. Those guitar lines are something else. Right. Juju is all about those captivating guitar lines, often with a talking drum, adding another layer of rhythmic complexity. It's infectious, joyful music showcasing the region's mastery of rhythm and melody. It's no wonder West Africa has had such a global impact. 
And it's not just the music itself, it's the messages behind it. I mean, Fela Kuti, a true icon of Afrobeat, used his platform to speak out against oppression. He turned his music into a force for social commentary. Absolutely. His music was a call to action, a way to challenge the status quo. It's incredibly powerful, but ready to explore a different vibe. Always. Where to next? From the pulsating energy of West Africa, let's shift gears to a region known for its intense emotion and raw, soulful vocals, Central Africa. You mentioned earlier that Central Africa was the place to feel things deeply. What is it about the music that creates that feeling? A lot of it comes down to those passionate vocals, often expressing stories of love, loss, and the human experience. Mm -hmm. Sukus, for example, is a genre that perfectly embodies this. Sukus, that's the one from Congo, right? You got it. It originated in the Democratic Republic of Congo and is characterized by those heartfelt vocals and intricate guitar work. I bet. I've heard those guitars can really weave a tale. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Sukus often features multiple guitars, each one like a voice in a conversation, creating a hypnotic soundscape. Wow, it's like a musical conversation. Now, from the heart of the continent, I'm curious about the South. I've heard whispers about Southern Africa being home to some truly powerful vocal traditions. What can you tell us about that? You're not wrong. When you think Southern Africa, think rich vocal harmonies, often a capella that send chills down your spine. You mentioned a genre called mbube before, is that what you mean? Exactly. Mbube, meaning lion in Zulu, is all about those powerful harmonies and call and response singing. It's about storytelling, passing down history and raw emotion through those incredible voices. It's amazing how music can do that, transport you to another time and place through sound. Do you have a favorite example of mbube music? Oh, that's easy. Ladysmith, Black Mombazo. Their sound is iconic, pure magic. I've got to check them out. But we can't forget about North Africa, a whole different vibe up there, right? With Arabic and Berber influences, I imagine the music takes on a whole other flavor. You're spot on. North Africa is where those ancient trade routes and cultural exchanges really come alive in the music. So what's a genre that comes to mind when you think North African music? Ray music. It's a prime example of that unique blend originating in Algeria. It often features traditional instruments like the Oud and Gazba flute alongside modern instruments. Ray, the name itself has a certain mystique to it. What's the story there? Well, Rai translates to opinion or advice, and it often reflects that. It emerged as a form of social commentary, challenging societal norms. Imagine a smoky cafe in Algiers, the scent of mint tea in the air, and the raw, emotive vocals of a Rai singer filling the space. Wow, I can practically hear it now. <laughs> you know, hearing you describe these genres, from the high life of Ghana to the Sukus of Congo and the Rai of Algeria, it strikes me that music in Alkebulan is about so much more than just entertainment. You're absolutely right. Across Alkebulan, music is woven into the very fabric of life. It's a vital part of ritual, ceremony, celebrations. It's a part of everyday existence. Can you give us an example of what those rituals might look like? Bake the asterisk in Yambezi asterisk rituals in Southern Africa. These rituals use music and dance as a way for communities to grieve and heal together. It's amazing how music can do that, bring people together in times of joy and sorrow. It's a testament to the power of music to help us navigate complex emotions, you know. It's a reminder that music can be a conduit for healing, a way to connect with something larger than ourselves. It's like a language that speaks to the soul. And speaking of powerful voices, we'd be remiss not to mention the incredible women of African music. Oh, absolutely. They've broken barriers and enriched the musical tapestry of El Kebulan with their talent and stories. So who are some of these incredible women we should be listening to? Give us some names. Where to even begin? There are so many. But you can't go wrong with Miriam Makeba, a true icon who used her voice to fight against apartheid. I've heard her name, but to be honest, I'm not very familiar with her work. What kind of music did she sing? I think South African rhythms blended with jazz influences. Her voice was absolutely captivating. And then there's Angelique Kidjo from Benin, a true force of nature. I've heard that name too. What's special about her music? Get ready for powerful vocals and electrifying stage presence. Seeing her live is an experience. And then, of course, there's Cesaria Evora, the barefoot diva from Cape Verde. Barefoot diva. That's a new one. What's her story? She often performed barefoot in solidarity with the poor and displaced people of her homeland. Her music is soulful, often described as Morna and utterly captivating. Wow, what a powerful statement. It seems like there's always more to discover. Any other women we should add to our list? Oh, definitely. Don't miss Umu Sangari from Mali. Her music carries messages of female empowerment and social justice.
It's inspiring to hear about these women using their platforms to uplift and empower others. It really drives home that music can be a force for good in the world. Absolutely. And that force isn't confined to al in itself. Its influence stretches far beyond the continent's borders. You're talking about the global influence of African music. It's incredible how those rhythms and melodies have traveled, influencing so many genres. Exactly. Those rhythms, melodies, stories, they've crossed oceans, shaping genres from jazz and blues to rock, pop, hip-hop, you name it. It really does. It speaks to the universality of music, don't you think? How rhythms and melodies, no matter where they originate, can resonate across cultures and continents. It's a reminder of our shared humanity. We might speak different languages or have different traditions, but music has this incredible power to connect us on a deeper level. I completely agree. It reminds me something I came across while prepping for our deep dive, a quote from Sitting Bull. He said, it is through this mysterious power that we too have our being. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the land, our connection to nature, but it struck me how easily those words could apply to music as well, especially the music of Al Kibbelin. I see what you mean, that sense of reverence, of recognizing the power and depth within the music. It's essential. Because it is more than just entertainment, right? It's a reflection of the human spirit. It's history, culture, raw emotion, all woven together into something that transcends borders. Beautifully said. Yeah. And in a world that often feels divided, music, especially music from a place as diverse and historically rich as Alkebulin, mm -hmm. reminds us of our shared humanity. It's like a bridge connecting us, not just to other cultures, but also to something deeper within ourselves. So as we wrap up our sonic journey through Alkebulon, I want to leave our listeners with this. Stay curious. Don't be afraid to explore new sounds. Exactly. Listen with an open heart and an open mind. Because within those rhythms, those melodies, those stories told through music, you might just discover something new about yourself and the world around you. Couldn't have said it better myself. Until next time. Happy listening, everyone.